Hello everybody and welcome. I'm Eustace Farmer and I hope you're all doing well today as always. So this video is going to be aimed at the novice user. This is going to be a very basic Giants Editor tutorial, if you will, just so you can go in and make some minor tweaks to a map that you love and enjoy playing. And maybe you would like to alter things just to make it more to your liking, or maybe you need to solve a little problem. What do I mean by problems? Well, on old streams one time, we had a situation where a pitchfork was blocking a wool pallet trigger. You go into Giants Editor, you move or delete the pitchfork, boom, done. Problem solved. Uh, on another map I was looking at, uh, I was looking for the gold nuggets, and a couple of them I found were embedded inside of the map. Uh, one was under the map, one was inside a structure. Um, this can very easily happen. It's not a malicious thing the modders do. Sometimes you put down the gold nuggets and then you go and you alter something or move something around and you forget to arrange the nugget that's sitting on it and it can go inside of the structure or under the map. Uh, so this can easily fix those problems so you don't have to be stressed. So let's go ahead and get straight into it right after this. Silent scan. Okay, so there's a few steps that I'm going to urge you to do before you even begin to edit the map. This is very important, crucial, if you will. So the first thing you'll do is you'll go to this PC, Documents, and then My Games, and here's your Farming Simulator 2017 folder. I recommend right-clicking on it, hit Copy, and paste it into your external hard drive off your computer someplace where you'll have a backup of the entire game. That way, if you mess up anything, you have an entire copy of your game saves, the maps, everything. Um, even your Steam backups are located in here as well. Um, here you go, Save Game Backup. That's what Steam does. So if you don't have that enabled and you're a Steam player, please do enable that. It's a lifesaver. <laughs> okay, so once you have that done, oh, and I should mention, if you don't have an external hard drive and you're not in a position to purchase one, that's okay too. Um, go to another drive on your computer, or even the same drive if you really have to, if you don't have a partition hard drive. Create a folder. New folder. There you go. And then paste it in here. At least you have a separate copy of the entire game someplace. That's the important thing, okay? Can't stress that enough. Okay, so I don't need that, so let's delete it, because I already made a backup on my external hard drive. Um, so the next thing you're going to want to do, you're going to want to stay organized. Very important. So, Cobro Park. You see I've created something to be editing Cobro Park. So here we go, cleanup edit. I have the file in there. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have a folder for your edited version and a folder for the original. And you'll put the original map into this folder and then you'll extract it and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, and then put the extracted copy into your edit folder. Very easy. Now what are you going to do? You're going to take this folder and you're going to extract it. So you hit right click, extract all. If your PC doesn't come with a file extractor built in, there's plenty of good ones out there. Um, you can download one and use that. Okay, so once you get that done, we're going to take this folder and you're going to cut it and put it into your edited folder. Okay, and I already have a copy that I use, so I won't be needing to do that either. Okay, so now that we have our extracted copy in our isolated folder that I named Cleanup Edit. I'm going to double click on it and go inside and we're going to look for a folder called Maps. Get inside that and here's the Cobra Park Farm i3D file. That's the one you want. Now I'm also going to leave a link down in the description so you can go over and download the Giants Editor for yourself. Um, you are going to have to register with them in order to get it. Um, it's a quick and easy process and um, it's well worthwhile. Okay, so I'm just gonna double click on it and it's gonna begin to open. Now, based on the performance of your particular computer, it could take a little while, so don't be alarmed, and it might even say not responding. Just let it do its thing. 
Um, so it's pretty quick here. Now, you're not going to be able to use your arrow keys to move around. So how are you going to move around? Now, this is how I do it. I hold down my right mouse button, and that's going to give me the function to do the camera. Okay, you can move around like that. Now, if I want to just go forward a little bit, I can scroll my mouse wheel forward. Now, if I'd like to move around a bit faster, holding down my right click, I hit W, and I can walk. If I do right click W and then push my shift, you can run, and boy can you run fast. <laughs> So now one thing is you're not going to want to get crazy doing this um, because it's very easy to get crazy <laughs> because you're going to have a lot of fun. Um, but if you start doing things like altering terrain heights and painting and all that, you're going to have to start a new game save. Um, you can also mess things up and it'll start throwing errors. Uh, so you really have to know what you're doing. There are little things you can do and I'll show you. Um, let's go to the main farm here. Here we are. So on the main farm, this is um, the clean version. I already cleaned up a bit here, and if you've seen some of my previous episodes, you'll know that I went through here and we did a, a bit of a clean and an organize. So I noticed I would like to put my big um, horse plow in here, but this structure is a little bit too short, just a little bit. So what I'd like to do is I'll just left click and highlight the entire structure. You have to make sure that you get the entire structure. Okay. Um, you got to be careful with moving things around and stuff because if the sheds have lighting in them, you're going to want to make sure that that's highlighted and the lighting nodes because I've noticed, especially on like little pole lamps and stuff, you'll have the item itself and then the, the little light will be a separate little node and you'll have to move that as well. So that's something you really need to keep in mind. So once I highlight it all, I'm going to hold my right click and I'm just going to use my mouse wheel to come in and you can clip through everything here. So um, I just want to make sure that it's all highlighted and that it is. And then you're going to see this little um, sphere and this is how you arrange things. Um, you can move things in any direction. You can um, tilt it in any axis by using these little handles. Um, if I click on this, it'll move it up. Okay, I hold it and I, I can I can pick this thing straight up. Okay, now let's say I didn't want to do that. I'll just come into edit and hit undo. Boom, it's back. If you hit the little square above the arrows, that's going to alter the structure. It's going to make it taller or shorter. Okay, so we don't want that right now. Edit, undo, boom, back. Now, it's really important when you're moving around, you're going to really want to hold that right mouse click button down because um, you can swipe over things if you're holding your left mouse by accident. So don't be distracted. Um, do this when you have some quiet time, uninterrupted, and, um, you know, have a bit of concentration about you. Okay, so let's go ahead, and I just want to raise this up just a little bit. And we're going to increase, we're going to stretch it, basically. Now that should do it for me. I just needed it a little bit. So let's look around and let's make sure that we didn't do anything to anything else or make it look odd. And when you're altering the width of things and the height of things, you really have to look it over from all angles because you'll be at one angle thinking, oh, this looks just great. And then you'll come down here for instance and you'll see that it's floating or something like that so you really have to look at all angles and using the Giants editor I will have you know this is really going to make you appreciate the enormous amount of time skill and effort that goes into creating a map even down to the smallest item okay so this all looks pretty good but while I'm here I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to bring this in just a little bit now you know you notice it's stretched from this angle so you're gonna to have to be aware of that as well um, that just because you're looking over here doesn't mean it's going to move uh, from that point and I'll show you again edit undo see so what I'll have to do is 
go like that and then I'm going to move the entire structure over. So now instead of using this little uh, uh, cube, I'm going to use the arrow. So left click and I'm just going to move it back over a little bit. Just because I would rather not have it clip through too much. Not that it's really doing anything, I'm just being, you know, a pest. <laughs> There we go. And now I can stretch it back a little bit. Now, one thing also you're going to have to keep aware of in my game, I have a placeable little lean to over here. So you're going to have to be aware of what you have on the map, so forth and so on. So you don't encroach upon things. Otherwise, when you load the game, uh, things are going to go flying. <laughs> um, and you could throw errors or crash your game. So looks pretty darn good to me. So here's a, a good practice. Anytime you do something good and you've checked thoroughly, go ahead and save it. And you're going to see while it's saving, you're not going to be able to move anything. So just give it a second. There we go. Now it's saved. So let me give you a, a little bit of a example here. Here is a light. Let's go ahead and we'll highlight that. Now I'm going to point up in the air and I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel forward and that's how you raise yourself up. Let's just move the light out. And as you see, I didn't move the light. I'm moving the light beam itself. Okay? So that's what you're going to have to be aware of. And sometimes you'll have to move the, the light itself in order to get the, um, the unit. So we'll move those out of the way. Okay, once you move them far enough out of the way where the mesh doesn't interfere with this, then you can go ahead and move your light. And as you see, these will move together. So once you place your light back where you would like it, then you can go ahead and move all this back in place. Um, I really don't recommend doing this. You can really um, mess things up pretty good. <laughs> okay, so what else can you do? Well, down here, I would like to place a little um, manufacturing facility that I came across. Now, there's an easy way and a more advanced way to do this. <laughs> um, you can import a placeable object into the game and place it down properly, you know, and have all the um, degrees of rotation and angle to play with so you can get it just perfect. That takes a little bit more of an experienced hand. Um, because anytime you do that, you're going to have to bring over the scripting to make it work right. So this is a method that you can do as a novice. Let's say that you want to have that placeable here. Um, I don't do much with wood chips and we have tip anywhere, so I could put my wood chips any place. Um, so I can highlight this. Now, if you would like to place this somewhere else, move it, move it someplace else and place it, that's fine. Let's look and see if there's any lighting in this shed. No, this is just the standard shed like it was in FS15. So you can do one of two things. You can move it out of the way, or you can um, delete the entire thing. Now, you're going to notice that it highlighted the shed itself, but not this wall. Okay. And this wall has a collision on it. So you're going to want to make sure that you get everything. Okay. So you can move the shed over and then you can come in here and delete these individual objects as well. So this is another reason, you know, like I said, if you don't want to move things around, some things come in many parts. There's buildings in here where all the roofing panels are separate. <laughs> uh, you can really get into uh, some sticky situations. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Now, I just want to make it clear. There's nothing wrong with this map in its original state. It was beautifully done. Um, but sometimes you like to tweak things just to get them to where, you know, you can use it a little better for yourself. Um, and just because you alter and edit a map, I don't care if you rearrange the whole terrain. Um, this is not your map. So you're not to upload or distribute your edited copy um, without the expressed personal permission of the mod author. Okay, so get that out of the way. <laughs> so there we go. So let me go ahead. I'm going to get rid of these two. Now if I click on one and then hold down my shift button and left click, I can grab multiple items. There we are. Now, this is the fuel box. 
Um, I'm going to get rid of that. We won't need it. See, this is multiple levels um, or multiple pieces. So you get rid of that. And this just goes to show you, just to build this simple little box, he's got to put each and every component together, make sure they fit right, make sure they're not floating. You know, it, it, it's really no easy task. Let's see what we get with this one. There we go. So now we can leave it just how it is, okay? Or if you'd like to maybe improve upon this a little bit, we can paint in a little bit of cement. Now, I'm not as good as um, Bullet Bill is because you see he put all those nice little cracks and details in there, but I can go ahead and uh, whiz on some cement just to show you. Okay, let's see what we got here. So over in the brush section, it's on terrain. This controls your radius, the size of the brush, the hardness basically means it, it kind of works like opacity does, um, but it's going to be how hard or soft the texture will be. And then you have your opacity, which is how much of it will show up. Okay. Um, the brush style, would you like a round brush or a square brush? If you're doing fields or maybe even something like this, you might choose a square brush. Now, LMB, MMB, and RMB, this is left mouse button, middle mouse button, which is like if you click down on your scroll wheel, and then right mouse button. So right mouse button, I have it on subtract. So that means if I'm painting something, I can come back and hold my right mouse button down and remove it. The middle mouse button is more for terrain sculpting. That will smooth uh, out rough edges after you've you know raised or lowered a uh, element on the map. And then the left mouse button is add. So we're going to go into um, texture painting. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that with layers, you can only have four in one particular grid because uh, the map is laid out in quadrants. So in each little square, however they're designated, you can only have but so many elements. So um, if you want to add something, you might have to take something away if there's already four in there. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Terrain detail paint mode. Okay, so that I know that we want that because we're going to be doing um, cement and stuff like that. We're not doing foliage. If we wanted to paint in some foliage, then we would use the foliage. So we're not doing grass or anything like that just yet. Okay, so now that I have that selected, I'm going to come down here, and as you see, it says it's painting dirt. And that's what you're going to get, as you see. We don't want dirt. <laughs> okay, so... Instead of dirt, I would like to have, we could do asphalt, or we can do um, cement, concrete. Okay, so there we go. So I have, let's see if I, if I take, if I put dirt here. So I have asphalt selected here, and I can go ahead with my right, with my left mouse button. Let me go ahead and do the square button there. There we go. I'll just go ahead and paint some of this in here. Now, if you want to move around, you're going to have to click that off, make your move, and then click it back on. Okay? We'll zoom out a little bit. That's a good vantage point there. Click that back on. Now, if I want to increase my radius or decrease it, I'm just going to use my scroll wheel on my mouse. Okay? So this is a pretty big area. So let's... let's now, I'm just doing little clicks. Don't get too heavy handed because it's easier to add than it is to take away. Okay, so I did something good, so let me save it. And we'll just have a little bit come right up to the edge of the road here. And it's not going to paint onto the road because this is um, an entire different item. But this kind of smooths out the transition. Okay, good. Now I'll click that off and I'm going to come in here. See, you can either move that you can even make it bigger. You can do all kind of stuff. Delete. That's what I want to do with it. So there we go. And let's say that I wanted to increase this over here. I can go ahead and let's see, let's go into our foliage. So now it's grass. 
I'm going to put everything on grass. And as you see, I'm removing the grass layer here. Now, there's different types of grass that are used in the map. So if you're seeing that something isn't being removed, you're going to have to... Um, you're going to have to go into here. I'll show you. Go back over here. Foliage layer. There's dry grass. There's regular grass. Forest. You're going to have to see which one was put down here. It might be on a different layer. So, okay. So I went down here to the foliage painting layer. And I hit leaves, and it took away some of the grass that was up here. Because it's on this layer here where the leaves were painted. Sometimes, you know, especially when you're not very knowledgeable, you have to kind of play the guessing game. All right, so to remove these little jobs here, I have it on the Eisenhut. And the texture layer is grass. And it takes it right out. There we go. Let's go ahead and paint in some asphalt. And we can also kind of see what else we need to move around. There we go. So we'll just extend that down a little bit. So let's see, let me go ahead and put in a little bit of dirt and I'm going to lower the opacity down a little bit. Take the hardness down. Let's try that. There we go. And we'll get the opacity down a little bit. There we go. I just want to bring it up gradually, see? Don't be impatient. There we go. So there's a little bit more dirt here because as you see this kind of humps down. Okay, so now we still have a little bit of grass going on down here. So I'm in the foliage layer. Let's see what we can do with that. Get rid of that Eisenhut. If there's any more of that rolling around in there. Let's go to the asphalt. There we go. And it'll keep it from clipping through there. And there we go. Okay, so why don't we go on to another map. I want to show you a couple of more um, things that you can do with the Giants Editor on, a, on a Chillington Farm and then another map as well. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, one thing I did neglect to point out is um, there is keyboard shortcuts that you can read and this will bring you to their website and there are um, video tutorials. Um, I don't think that they're terribly extensive, but they will give you a good gist of what's going on and you can always print out the keyboard shortcuts that you would like to have. Um, there's a lot of them, so you might not want to print them all out. <laughs> you might have a book. So some of the things that I'd like to have is like I would like to utilize this space a little bit more. So like you can move around this stuff here or, you know, delete some of it. Um, it does tend to le uh, lend some character to the map, so I would rather not delete it. Um, you know, Oxygen David worked very hard, you know, making this map um, really breathe some life into into it with some character so there we go so I'll move it over here it looks good in the bushes this is where you think you would find it so let's see make sure it's not sunk down too much right about there is good and then maybe I'll move these little cylinders over a little bit and then we'll have a look at them make sure they're not floating good now another thing some of these models um, let me click off of it, um, are many pieces. So you, like I said before, you want to have everything highlighted because sometimes the wheels are separate and little items are separate and you may not even notice, um, at first. So you want to take a good look. Even some of these little screws on some things can be separate and you'll have, you know, those things floating in the air <laughs> and you'll come across it later in the game. Okay. So right about there and the tires, I want it to go in a little bit make it look like it sank down on the soil and that'll be good enough for that looks good there and then the tires and stuff I can move just so I can park things over here if I want to um, I can clean that up later 
Okay, so in here looks good. Now the dumpster, this can sometimes get in the way if you're backing things in tight over here. Now, being that he closed this building off, and I mean we can simply open it up again if we'd like to, but that's closed off because there's no textures on the inside, uh, so forth and so on. So what you could do is, if you wanted to, you can get rid of this building and put a placeable here of some kind, um, but you would preliminarily want to go into your game and put your placeable over this to make sure it fits in the same space properly. Um, and that goes to say that you don't want to interfere with any triggers as well. So you can do that. Um, I kind of like that old barn. It's been here since the beginning in 2015. So I like it. <laughs> so being that that's where in my Christmas video the croppers came from, we're going to go ahead and make doubly sure that that old Krampus doesn't get out of that storage shed. We're going to go ahead and put the dumpster right in front of it. Let's go ahead and spin that this way. And like I said before, one thing you're going to have to really be careful of is make sure that if you're moving things that the you're highlighting the arrows um, and not mistakenly this because you'll stretch it. Uh, in either direction, which you can just hit undo if you do it by mistake. Okay. And I'll just wait till it clips in and then move it out gently. Right about there is good. Now we want to make sure, now this looks like it's floating, but it's not. So you have to look at elements on these models. Um, there's wheels on there. So I want to make sure that the wheels are touching the ground. And then... I'm not going to delete these hay bales back here because they have collisions with them. They're decorative. Um, but I will get rid of these here just so I can park things in here a little better. There. Now the water trailer. I'd like to be able to get some other things in through here. So let's go ahead and let's just put this over here and make like it was parked under the tree and kind of forgotten about. But as you see, when you're doing this on a large map in large, you know, scale project, um, you can appreciate how much time and effort it takes in creating a map. And I mean, oops, see, I just made a mistake. So we just hit undo. But the painstaking work it takes just to even place one item. And this old fencing is kind of mixed in with the tree collision there. So let's go ahead and let's organize it a little bit. Let's just put it up against the side of the barn. Now you can also do a little more fine adjustment. See the number that's moving? So it's the X and Y axis. So let's say that it's like right here, but I want it just a tad off the wall. 66, 32, let's do 22. There is a couple areas over here that I'd like to address. Um, so like in this area here. So we already have a settling torch in the garage. So I'm going to get rid of that one because I'd like to utilize this space a little bit more. And all this looks good over here. I'm okay with that. This is not in the way. So these could potentially get in the way, but I doubt it. Um, so this one, we already have one. So let's go ahead and we'll remove that because I can use this space. Let's see what we got going on in here. Yeah, we already have an engine lift in the other place. So I'm going to get rid of that. So there we go. So this works out well for me. Now what I will do is, because I know that some of the equipment is tall, let's get rid of these. And the barrel. There we go. I might want to raise this up just a, just a, a touch. Just a little bit. There we go. And I can even increase the width. Just a tad. So let's go ahead and highlight our building again. Take it like that. And then we'll have to move it back. And then we'll have to check around and make sure that we didn't mess anything up. I didn't mess anything up. 
I'll leave we out of this. <laughs> there we go. Looks good. I'm worried about this tree here. I'd like to move the tree over a little bit. Just so it's not clipping through. Now that's going to impede on our entrance there. See, so it's cause and effect. You do one thing and it leads you to do another thing. Now what I could do is just squeeze this in a little bit and we'll see how it looks. It's not clipping through. Looks good. There's no overhanging branches to clip us when we're driving things through here. Looks good. Now, oh, how'd you get in here? Out you go. And now what I can do is I can go ahead and delete all that grass in there if I would like to. Let's see what we can do here. I don't want to fuss around with it too much. There we go. Oh, look at that. These are lavender flowers. So I, I didn't realize that they would be placeable, but I would like to move them. I don't want to get rid of them. So let me go ahead and find a new happy home for these. Put them with his brothers and sisters. <laughs> so we'll see in game, you know, just to make sure that that tree doesn't look too weird. Okay. So what do we got going on here? So some of these little weeds have crept underneath the ground and they're growing in the corner of the barn. We can leave them like that or we can get rid of them. Okay, so this little flower here, I'm in the foliage layer and I had to determine what layer it was placed on. So on the texture, I have gravel. And then down here on the texture layer is gravel. So we're in foliage layer painting. So grass two is this little one here. And I just right click and gone. Now, we'll swing around here. We know we've got the right layer, hopefully even over here as well. And let's see if we can't figure out which one this is. So I'm going to think it's going to be one of the, maybe some brush. No, brush one, brush two. There we go. It's brush number two. So now we know we're on the correct uh, layer. So I would like to not have as much dirt in here. Um, I'd like to have a little of the concrete coming through or some gravel or something. And what we have here is the texture layer painting. So if you wanted to paint into these chunks here, you'd have to determine what level, uh, what, um, what layer they're on. There we go. A little better. Now I know these trees, I was going to put greenhouses in the back here and some of these trees do clip in. So what I can do is I can move some of them back or remove some of them all together. So if, like if I take this one and move it back into the hillside a little bit or put it up above, in that meadow I can do that as well and this area here would actually be pretty good because you know would a lot of times when you have a tree that's been around a long time and it's in the shade the grass doesn't grow very well underneath it anymore and then these bushes let's see if we can do something like this and then pull it out a little bit angle it down so it looks like it's kind of growing out of the hillside a little bit see how that looks you know, something like that. So like I said, you don't always have to delete it. What I would like to do back here is I would like to take this old harvester out of here so I can use that space. Now this is a model I was talking about. Now you see, if you click on, you can move the tires. So that's pretty good because when you get it into position, you can adjust the individual elements, but you have to make sure that you highlight everything. And if you're moving something like a gate, you want to make sure that you have the gate and the trigger that you want to move all together. Okay, so let's put this guy back here. He's kind of just been backed up into the weeds because he's old, not being used anymore and forgotten. That actually looks pretty darn good. That was an easy move. <laughs> of course, let me pick it up because I think it's sunk in too far. Yeah, see the wheel 
we'll have it like that, and then I'm going to tilt it forward. We're going to adjust this a little bit. Okay, yeah, there's no front wheel on it, so it's naturally going to be tilted forward. That's pretty good. Let's get this tire down a little bit. We'll put it on the ground. So right about there. Let's get this one about there, and then we'll move it into place. That looks good. Make sure it's not floating in the back. Looks good. Okay. So now, when I'm coming in this gate over here, this guy gets in the way. So, see, now I didn't highlight the wheels. Watch what happens. See, there's a lot of individual parts in this model. Now those barrels, I can move up against the side of the building and um, stack them up. Let's wait and see, though. Let's wait a little bit. Let's go on in here. Now this isn't really getting in the way of anything, but I can move it back a little bit more. You know, we could pretend it was backed in over here. That looks pretty decent, but I would like to see the wheels more. So if we can get some of this foliage out of the way, let's see. What's this guy doing? Well, that's an entire tree that he used for a bush. I'd like to get this hedge in here. Let's see. Let's just get rid of him. See? Now we understand that this is looking a little funky. So this wheel would be up here. Let's tilt it about like that. And then we got the gravel pile. We can pick that up as one piece. Ooh, that's a big one. We'll just move that right in here. Clip it into the ground a little bit. Maybe make it a little smaller. And then these. Okay, so this tractor here, we're going to go ahead and get rid of this. We're going to move it out of here, not get rid of it. But as you see, I can highlight each individual piece or the entire model. Okay, so now we got our tractor out of there. We can commence with cleaning up.
Okay, everybody. So here I am back on the desktop. And um, what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to take the name of the folder. Let me hit copy. We don't want to rename the folder, as I said before, because then you'll have to start a new game. Um, and to tell you the truth, I had to start a new game anyway. I think it's because I did the um, the pavement, the texture painting in the uh, shed. Uh, the game said, hey, pal, you moved around a lot of stuff. This is the limit so you start a new game so I just took my vehicle XML file out of my save game folder and transferred it to the new save and I have all my vehicles just where I left them um, I didn't do much as far as harvesting on the map goes or planting so it was no big sacrifice to me but something to keep in mind if you're gonna do extensive editing um, do it on a on a new map if you don't want to start a new game then um, I would avoid doing the texture painting and all that and moving around too much stuff but um, if you don't mind starting a new game, have at it. Um, otherwise, when you first get a map, before you play it, go in and have a good look around. Maybe even let it soak in for a day or two. See what you'd like to change or fix or see what problems you run into that you can fix. And um, do it all before you really get started in the map and you're better off. Okay, so what I'm going to do in here is I'm just going to hit my left control and the letter A. That's going to highlight everything. Then I'm going to hit right click. And I'm going to hit send to compress zip folder. Okay, so now we'll just rename it. Because we don't want to call it icon zip. So I'll just hit control V because we already copied the name. And there we go. So there's our new save folder. And then you'll just drag it into your mods folder. And if you have the other Chellington farm in there, it's just going to ask you if you want to replace it. And you just say yes. And we're saying yes because we've already done a backup. So we have our originals. And that's it. So let me jump into the game and I'll show you around a little bit. Alrighty. So the first thing I'll show you is we have no errors. So I didn't do anything too bad. <laughs> so let's go take a walk down here. So here's, let me take off my speed mod. There we go. So here's the bulldozer that we moved. And then here's our new shed with our nice new floor. Raised up a little bit. It's a little taller. There's our little plants that we placed. And we'll go around here. See if we can clip through the bushes here. Yeah. And there's our old harvester. So this one actually, this tire is a little floaty. But... I'm going to say that it's cocked up off the ground here because it's sitting on a hill there and it's leaning against that tire. There. That's my excuse. <laughs> I can go back in and fix it, but, I mean, for me, to be honest, that's really, you know, gilding the lily a little bit. <laughs> and then over here we have where the harvester used to be, so now we can go ahead and park stuff in there. And, of course, if I knew I was going to have to start a new save, I would have came in and deleted this grass, but again... Something to be expected. If you have grass growing along the side of the building and a dirt floor, eventually you're going to get grass in there, I would think. So, definitely could be explained. And then here's our little arrangement over here. <laughs> and then, last but not least, our shop. Now, I could have also leveled this floor a bit. I could have hit the smoothing and leveled that down a bit. Um... I did over here a bit, but I really didn't see this. I wasn't looking that close, but that's okay. We're only going to be parking, you know, tractors in here and stuff, so. And here's our little uh, cleanup job. Not too bad. A little crooked on that box over there, but again, you know, you got to kind of stop at some point. <laughs> There's our little barrels we stacked, and they're not floating, so that's good news. And our old tractor, looking good. Like I said, I've always liked elements like this in the game, just to make it more immersive, so I, I really don't like to get rid of a lot of that stuff. I don't want the farm to look too sterile. And then here's our little conveyor, with the old fences leaning up on it. So... Looking pretty darn good. And here's where the bulldozer used to be. So now we've got this storage opened up as well. Which I just love me some storage. <laughs> it 
as you see back there, I put a couple of those bunkers back here for the harvesters. So they'll be living in there. I have one of them in here already. I'll put the silage harvester in the other one. Both the doors do open. So here we go. This fits the harvester and the header. Pretty nice. And then over here, I made this a little bit taller so I can get some taller things in here if I wanted to. There's our little dumpster. Oh yeah, the hay bales. There we go. Got a whole other section over here. And then here's the hill, uh, the trees that we embedded into the hillside. So they're looking pretty good. Looks like they just kind of slid down the landscape as erosion was occurring. All right, so let's go ahead and have a look at Colborough. Um, I know I said I was going to do a third map, but I think this video is getting on a bit too long. So I will do that in another uh, segment. There's some gold nuggets that are um, buried. One is buried in the side of a piece of rock, and the uh, two more are under the map. And I'm going to show you how to go ahead and retrieve those and bring them out to a place where you can get them easily. All right, enough blabbing. I'll see you in a second. Okay, so here we are in-game back on Colboro. And there's our little edited um, area here. So let me go ahead and let me get the placeable that I wanted to put out. Okay, so there we go. So Colboro Park Farm will be in the uh, soy milk manufacturing business. Alrighty, so the last thing to do here is just to check and make sure I can get my plow under here with my newly adjusted height of the building. Look at that. Just enough room. Perfect. Okay. So, one other test before we go. Let's make it nighttime. And let's just make sure the lights come on in the right places since I was fooling around with that. We'll go ahead and flip that light on. There we go. So, the light looks good. It's all in the right place. And our little factory here has lighting too. And it all looks great. This really looks really nice lit up at night. See, and as you see here, the water is spraying in. Very nice. So there you go, folks. So I want to thank you very much for tuning in and joining me. I hope this helps you out. And if you have any questions, please do let me know down in the comment section. As always, I'm happy to help any way that I can. I'm also working um, with a friend of mine, uh, Dusty Dave from Dusty Dave Modding. Um, I approached him to see if he would consider doing some more advanced tutorials, um, like importing uh, placeables and getting them to working right. Uh, through the Giants editor. So he's a pretty busy guy, but we're going to see if we can't work on getting some of that done. Um, he's interested in doing something like that, but we're not going to commit to a specific time just yet. Like I said, he's pretty busy. He's working on a couple of projects as it is. So in the meantime, I will be bringing you stuff that I can do. Like I said, I am by no means a pro at all, <laughs> but I can do basic things. Um, I hope this will help enhance your gameplay on your favorite map. So until we meet again, my friends, take great care of yourself, okay? And bye-bye for now.